Unit 11 Marginalized Groups Conceptually speaking, there are several groups of underprivileged, dis disadvantaged people who are denied access to valued resources and opportunities. The society refuses to recognize their contribution. They are pushed to the margins of society from where their voices, wishes, hopes and aspirations are not heard by those in power. People of marginalized, marginalized groups often suffer from social discrimination, poverty and sometimes even find it difficult to make both, both ends meet. They are at times treated as suspects in incidents of theft, drug, uh, theft, drug trafficking, murder and other crimes. Such people feel vulnerable, vulnerable threatened and insecure. Some of them accept what is meted out to them as part of their fate. Others react with violence and aggression. Orphaned, de delinquent and destitute children. The niche in which children derive happiness and joy is the family, which provides them food, clothing and shelter on the one hand and opportunities to realize their full potential on the other. Unfortunately, a large number of children are deprived of parental protection because of death or dis dis desert desertion of one or both parents. Inability of parents to take adequate care due to disease, alcoholism, poverty, etc. or abandonment, abandonment which, which could be because of birth before marriage of the mother. Such children who are actually in need of care and protection becomes victims of abuse and neglect by adults. Some of them take to rag picking, begging, petty crimes, etc. for which they are punished in different ways. Several of them are admitted in institutions in which they are encouraged to learn one or the other craft that would help them in making a living. Ideally, they are provided opportunities to improve their conduct. Orphaned and delinquent children suffer from inadequate attention, affection and concern of elders, pressure of being closely watched and monitored by adults in the institutions, few or no avenues for recreation and play, lack of opportunities for free expression of personal wishes. Apart from these, they are sometimes not fed properly and are made to live in small uh, dingy rooms in unhygienic conditions. Often the people who deal with the, with the children are insensitive, untrained and not motivated to discharge their duties effectively and with de diligence. All this leads to further alienation of the children from, the, from society and adds to their anguish and frustration. Children already suffering from lack of parental love and attention and made to encounter difficult situations in, re, in reformatory institutions develop a sense of being wronged and try to escape from them. The general attitude towards such children is that of disregard, suspicion and threat. They are treated as antisocial with no ability to lead a life of dignity. What they need is shelter, protection, education, vocational training, healthcare services and more importantly, counselling delivered with affection and encouragement. It is therefore essential that police officials and all those dealing with them are sen sensitized to children's will. The juvenile, the juvenile justice Act was launched in 1986 with a view to provide uniform pattern of justice to the juveniles throughout the length and breadth of the country. The Act makes provision for the protection and rehabilitation of neglected children and ensures that legally no ch child is lodged in jail or detained in police lockup. It also seeks to provide facilities of education, training and rehabilitation of children who have become delinquents or are in distress. The JJ Act categorizes children into one, those who are neglected, destitute, orphaned and in dire need of care and protection. They are lodged in orphanage, observation homes or remand homes and second, delinquent children who <coughs> await correctional measures. A, ju a juvenile delinquent is one who commit commits an act which if he or she was an adult an adult 
would be a crime neglected juvenile is a is a girl below 18 years and a boy below 16 years who may found begging without having any home or settled place or abode or without any ostensible means of subsistence with parents or guardians unable to exercise control of them they are lodged in reformatory institutions and special schools the jj act was replaced with the Ju Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act, Juvenile Justice Act 2000. This JJ Act 2000 is more child friendly. In this act, children are categorized into juvenile, juvenile offenders and the neglected child. Further, 18 years is laid out as the cut off age to treat boys and girls as children. The act makes the setting up of juvenile justice boards child welfare committees and, and special juvenile police units compulsory. Police personnel are sensitized and voluntary organizations engaged in social integration of child, children through adoption and foster care are greatly encouraged. A 24-hour free telephone dial service, better known as child line for children, in need of care and protection was initiated in 1998 by the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. This has been strengthened. In addition to making provision of shelter, education, health care and vocational training for self-employment, there is urgent need for effective administration and legal machinery for their protection from operation, exploitation and harassment. The Ministry of Welfare and the Ministry of Human Resource Development have launched several programs and welfare measures to help the children in difficult situations. There are government run institutions for orphaned, destitute and delinquent children, training programs for child care workers, package for supplementary nutrition, immunization, etc. There are also a large number of non-governmental organizations working towards enhancement of the plight of such children. Ironically, in spite of the long list of programs, the suffering of marginalized children continues. In must in must be mentioned it must be mentioned that none of these efforts would su succeed without active involvement and participation of the general public the di the disabled one comes across young as as also old men women children with physical and and or mental disabilities in all parts of the country it may be noted that disability is a physical or men or mental condition because of which a person's movements senses or activities are limited. Disabled people therefore are constrained in many ways. In the 10th five-year plan 2002 to 2007, persons with disabilities are defined as those suffering from four types of disabilities with visual, locomotors, hearing and speech and mental disabilities. Volume 2, 4, 475. There are many kinds of disabilities such as physical disability in which the movement of a person in, is curtailed because of the bodily conditions, example goes amputated limb, visual disability in which there is a partial or complete loss of sight, hearing and speech disability in which a person suffers from speech or hearing impairment and mental disability in which the person suffers from mental dysfunctions. The disabled therefore do not constitute a, a homogeneous category. category. According to National Sample Survey Organization NSSO, countrywide surveys, the population of the physically disabled persons has increased from 13.67 million in 1981 to 16.36 million in 1991. In 2001, the number of disabled persons <coughs> is estimated to be 20.5 million, which is roughly 2% of the total population of the population of the country. It is important to understand that disabled persons are like others with their own dreams and aspirations that they seek to pursue. Surely, they have a right to lead a life of dignity. Most of them are exceptionally sensitive about their disability and feel disheartened and disappointed if they are not treated well. Often, the way people treat the disabled in society is born out of number one, local beliefs. Some people believe, believe that disability is the result of an evil deed, evil deed performed by the person in the present or previous birth. Disability then is treated as a, as a punishment of the God. Many people therefore treat the disabled with contempt and do not empathize with them.
नंबर टू लैक ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन बिकॉज ऑफ विच डिसेबिलिटीज सच एज पैरालिसिस इज ट्रीटेड एज कॉन्टेजियस कॉन्टेजियस मेनी पीपल रिफ्रेन फ्रॉम गोइंग नियर अ पैरालिटिक पर्सन एंड नंबर थ्री जनरल रिजेक्शन बिकॉज ऑफ पॉवर्टी और फेल्योर टू रिकॉग्नाइज द पोटेंशियल एंड कैपेबिलिटीज ऑफ डिसेबल्ड पर्सन नॉट सरप्राइजिंग दैन दैट दे आर ट्रीटेड एज ए बर्डन ऑन सोसाइटी इट इज वर्थ वाइल टू रिकोगनाइज एंड आइडेंटिफाई देयर नीड्स एंड क्रिएट अपॉर्चुनिटीज थ्रू विच दे आर एबल टू अचीव सेल्फ रिलायंस वट इज इम्पॉर्टेंट इज टू इंकरेज द डिसेबल्ड टू डू सेल्फ डिपेंडेंट एंड सेल्फ रिलायंट अपार्ट फ्रॉम द इंडेवर ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट दिस कैन बी डन बोथ एट द फैमिली लेवल विद इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑफ फैमिली मेम्बर्स नाइबर्स एंड फ्रेंड्स एज ऑल्सो एट द कम्युनिटी लेवल थ्रू रिहेबिलिएशन सेंटर्स पीपल हु इंटरेक्ट विद द डिसेबल्ड नीड टू बी सेंसिटाइज टू अप्रिसिएट देयर स्पेशल नीड्स एबिलिटीज एंड पोटेंशियल फॉर मीनिंगफुल एग्जिस्टेंस केस स्टडी इन इंडिया आई डेविड वॉर्नर मेट अ विलेजर हु हैड लॉस्ट अ लैग इन ए हाउस बिल्डिंग एक्सीडेंट यूजिंग हिज इमेजिनेशन ही हैड मेड हिमसेल्फ एन आर्टिफिशियल लैग विद अ फ्लेक्सीबल फूड आउट ऑफ अ स्ट्रॉन्ग वायर विद स्ट्रिप्स ऑफ एन ओल्ड कॉटन ब्लैंकेट फॉर पैटिंग आफ्टर सेवरल मंथ्स ही हैड द ही हैड द चेन चांस to go to a city where a professional leg maker made him a costly modern fiber glass leg the man tried using the new limb for a couple of months but it was heavy and hot it did not let his stump breathe like his wire cage leg and he could not squat to eat or do this do his toilet as he could he could with his homemade leg finally he stopped using the costly new leg and went back to the one he had made for the climate and custom where he lived it was more appropriate women in distress in particular society one in which the father of the eldest male is the head of the family and the descent is traced through the male line ill treated de- deserted and widowed widowed women are generally marginalized because of the gender and because of the alienation from their families the problem is compounded in the indian situation where wherein a woman is of 10 is of 10 persuaded to then persuaded to continue to live with her husband even if she is subjected to humi- humiliation abuse and violence because her acceptance in society largely de- largely depends on the marital marital status a large number of women who are tormented by their husbands and their family members are rejected by the members of their own families if they return home several of them have no chance no choice and are forced to carry on with their lives in difficult conditions traditionally a woman who complains or seeks separation is treated as a deviant a husband on the other hand may distress his wife for another woman for any reason a desert a desert, deserted woman has to struggle hard to lead a life of dignity marriage and motherhood are treated as the more important stages in a woman's life a married woman with children particularly sons receives more respect than a, an unmarried woman or a married woman without children or with only daughters among others the incidence of abuse and ill treatment of women is highest for reasons for reasons of of dowry extortion bear ness and delivery of girl children in fact the roots of this problem are deep in the social fabric the birth of a daughter does not in most families families evoke joy and celebration she is treated as a liability a burden to be dispensed one may argue that these are stereotypical notions and that with the spread of education girls are being treated with love and respect yet it is true that many women feel powerless and suffer indig- indignity and dep- depression on several occasions worse still is the situation of rape rape victims and those of other forms of sexual harassment only few women share their ex- experiences and mobilize others to fight social barriers and condemn operation collectively over a period of time some marginalized women who share experiences and are concerned about the plight of other women in circumstances similar to their own have con- con- consolidated efforts to reach out to other women in distress these groups pers- pressurized pressurized the government 
to make intervention in terms of collect effective affecting appropriate literacy vocational training and empowerment programs leading to legal protection counseling and awareness of legal provision self reliance leading to physical and mental security gender sensitization of those in charge of women's welfare leading to emotional security another provision of much help to distressed women is that of establishing <coughs> shelter homes and short stay homes for them where they where they where they may live temporarily till they are rehabilitated these homes may be equipped with child care facilities that would help distressed women with children a great deal commercial sex workers commercial sex work or prostitution prostitution is the practice of sexual association on a promiscuous and um, mercenary basis with emotional indifference mender and round 1996 commercial sex work is usually associated with women tho women though in present day man and announce to engage in it it is however intended to focus here on women commercial sex workers purely for reasons for numerical preponderance the young girls and women particularly those belonging to socially and econom economically disadvantaged groups are more vulnerable to be initiated into the profession they may be forced forced sold sometimes by the family members because of poverty or dubbed the education level of women sold uh, seduced kidnapped or abducted and thrown into prostitution in the developing countries is low the situation is worsened by the pre presence of large number of orphaned unwanted abandoned and runaway children they are easy targets for pro procurers both of the economy uh, both of the country as as also those belonging to other countries eager to buy prostitutes some of them take to commercial sex work in order to overcome the pangs of hunger abuse desert de desertion or desti destitution a large number of them are mi migrants in the town or city where they work some belong to neighboring countries as nepal and bangladesh most commercial sex workers operate through um, operate through brothels that are specially defined premises lining specific zone zones in towns and cities known as red light areas a brothel is owned usually by an elderly lady who is commonly addressed as madam the brothel has one or more pimps who fetch clients for the commercial sex workers the earning is shared by all of them young commercial sex workers are largely exploited by the madam and pimps of the brothel and clients who come to the brothel they are also harassed by policemen or several on several occasions one of the ways through which the children may be educated and raised to be responsible citizens is encouraging the commercial sex workers to send them to residential schools some ngos have set up night child care centers so that the children children are not exposed to the activities in the brothel that gain momentum as night falls the commercial sex workers themselves need to be made aware of the hazards of promise promiscuous promiscuous sexual associations and measures of protection from them further they may be motivated to number 1 attend formal or non formal schools that would prepare them for inclusion in the national mainstream and number 2 undertake other means of earning livelihood vocational trainings training as that in tailoring nursing etc may be made readily available to them it is not enough to impart training to them what is equally worthwhile is to develop client clientele for the new vocations because most people would refrain from taking service from women who have formerly engaged in commercial sex work the immoral traffic prevention immoral traffic act lays down punishment for number 1 keeping a brothel or allowing premises to be used as a brothel second living on the earnings of prostitution number 3 pro procuring inclu including or taking person for the sake of prostitution fourth detaining a person where prostitution is carried on fifth carrying on prostitution in or in the vicinity of public places sixth seducing or solicited soliciting 
for purpose of prostitution and seventh soliciting or seduction seduction by a person having custody charge or care of or position of authority over an individual the act also makes provision for establishing protective homes and corrective institutions in which a female offender found guilty of practicing prostitution in public places or soliciting or seducing a person in custody or charge may be detained here the character state of health and mental condition of the offender are taken care of in an environment conducive to their correction there are several ngos engaged in rescuing women from brothels treating them for various diseases and redefining their names means of livelihood scheduled castes the term scheduled caste was first used in the government of india act of 1935 launched by the british it included those castes that were hitherto referred to as depressed classes and those that were treated as untouchables and socially defiled the term was, the term was adopted by makers of the constitution of the purpose for the purpose of providing them some opportunities facilities and constitutional guarantees that would compensate them for the ill treatment they had received from all quarters in the past the higher caste people would justify and legitimize their claim of superiority on religious grounds too they narrate a myth following which the brahmins kshatriyas vaishyas and shudras emerged from the mouth, mouth arms th- thighs and feet of brahma the creator of the universe respectively while the brahmins were ordained to or ordained to study and preach the scriptures kshatriya were ordained 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 to fight and protect the masses vaishyas were ordained to trade and shudras were ordained to serve those above them in this scheme was laid laid the first idea of inequality that placed shudras at the base of the pyramid and brahmins at the apex in essence the discrimination against scheduled castes laid down in the 1931 census focus focused on their inability to number 1 be served by the clan clan brahmins number 2 be served by barbers tailors etc who served the caste hindus third serve water to caste hindus fourth enter hindu temples fifth use uh, use public li- public like wells schools etc sixth dissociate oneself from dis- de- despised the government had to provide the opportunities for the growth their growth and development so it was the policy of protective discrimination was adopted in the constitution the government now offers them reservation of 15% in educational institutions jobs in the public sector and seats in the lok sabha and state legislative assemblies this is this is in addition to uh, pro proration of subsidy subsidy loans and other forms of financial assistance equally important is the provision to protect physical social cultural and religious interests of the scheduled castes practicing or promoting untouchability is counted as a offense nandu ram classifies the constitutional provisions into three broad categories number 1 safeguarding representations of scheduled castes in educational institutions in both central and state government jobs and in par- parliament and state assemblies number 2 prohibiting discrimination or social and religious disabilities abolition of untouchability ban on forced or bonded labor and opening up of entry into public places and third providing grants in aid and other facilities for constitute constructing houses digging wells for drinking water and for irrigation purposes starting small enterprises etc at first glance it it does appear that these provisions guarantee an upliftment of social and economic conditions of the scheduled caste people yet the scheduled castes continue to reel under social pressure and discrimination this is because the schemes and provisions charted out for them do not reach those who are in need it has been found that most of them are appropriated either by the high caste people or by the rich and influential families of the scheduled caste people themselves the net result is that only a very small fraction of the benefits reach the grassroots it is most unfortunate that long bureaucratic procedures are general apathy of the officers are of the officers are the major imp- impediments in the smooth flow of 
favors and benefits envisaged by the government for the scheduled caste people scheduled tribes who are the people included in the category of the scheduled tribes in our constitution it all begin all it all began with the decennial census after independence census census commissions in different states observed that certain groups of people particularly those living in hills and forests did not fit into the general pattern of classification based on religion and caste these people came to be preferred to as adivasis early inhabitants giri 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 janas mountain people and vanvasis forest dwellers the indigenous people better known as tribals were found to be characterized largely by a egalitarian society simple economic system with minimum minimal specialization function spe, specialization of functions yet self sufficient deep religious cultural and emotion, emotional 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 affections with their habitat and relative isolation from the rest of the world it is a fact that every tribal community is not classified as a scheduled tribe a scheduled tribe is one which which as which has been given a place in the schedule in the schedule for the concerned state by the president that the president may specify the tribe or tribal communities or parts of parts of or groups within tribes or tribal communities which shall be deemed to be scheduled tribes in selection to the state selection to the to that state in consultation with governor of the state a tribal community in different parts of the country may not be accorded the scheduled tribe status a tribal community spread out <coughs> in two or more states may not be treated as scheduled tribes scheduled tribe everywhere even in a single state the social and economic condition of a particular tribal community may vary may vary widely it is therefore possible that a community may be assigned the scheduled tribe status only in limited areas of districts in a state and not everywhere it is not incumbent on the president to provide special status to an entire community even within a state some members of a community who start from the same base may diversify a great deal from the parent group or an extent that they come to com- comprise a distinct in a distinct identifiable group such groups may not be in need of a special provisions the president may in such cases decide to include specific groups within a tribe under the scheduled tribe cover leaving out others such decisions are how are however based on the socio economic condition of the people in a group the designation of a common community as scheduled tribe provisioning special favors is based on the socio economic condition which is ever changing the list of the scheduled tribes in different states therefore needs to be reviewed and revised regularly the schedule may be reviewed and modified by an act of parliament this is not an easy procedure the result is that the schedule is not revised and regu- revised regularly and the tribes that have been included in it remain for there a long time in the absence of the date 2001 census the population of scheduled tribes is estimated to be 88.8 million by 2001 which is roughly 8.6% of the total population of the country the process of alienation has had far reaching consequences on tri- on tribal lifestyle and economic condition contact with non tribal people who seek to pursue vested interests are able to target the ali- alienated displaced tribals easily not with understanding the threat to cu- cultural identity that such encounters bring tribals are failing prey to indebtedness in times of famine scarcity floods scarcity floods and other crises the money lenders exploit them mercilessly the tribals who are largely illiterate and innocent do not maintain their own records of the transactions nor are in a position to check the records kept by the money lenders they remain under the grip of money lenders for generations several of them live below the poverty line while some do not realize the importance of education and want to send their children to schools facing all odds others are not so keen many tribal children do not fare well because the medium of instruction is in in schools does not match with their language 
मोर ओवर द करिकुलम डज नॉट सूट देर नीड्स इट इज़ कम्प्लीटली इनकम्प्रीहेंसिबल टू दैम अगेन ट्राइबल टीचर्स हु मे इम्पार्ट एजुकेशन इफेक्टिवली आर नॉट अवेलेबल एंड देर इज़ ए जनरल लैक ऑफ इंटरेस्ट लैक ऑफ बोथ एजुकेशन एंड अवेयरनेस ऑफ देयर राइट्स एंड प्रोविजन्स मेड बाई द गवर्नमेंट फॉर द अपलिफ्टमेंट ऑफ देयर सोशल एंड इकोनॉमिक कंडीशंस मेक दैम ईजी विक्टिम्स ऑफ एक्सप्लोटेशन एट द हैंड्स ऑफ करप्ट ऑफिशियल्स टू हु to whom are responsible for dispensing the welfare measures often they are not able to avail the provisions made for made for easy access to loan loans or soft terms and conditions reservation of 7.5% of the seats in educational institutions and in jobs in the public sector scholarships reservation of seats in lok sabha and state legislative assembly etc optimally the there is no denying that the welfare programs for scheduled tribes should be drawn up in a way that they relate with their cultural system and are delivered at their door steps yet despite several welfare programs that already in operation scheduled tribes continue to struggle hard for basic amenities other backward classes British administrator British administrators used the abbreviation abbreviation OBC to mean other backward castes in the constitution however OBC refers to the backward classes other than scheduled castes and scheduled tribes they are described as socially and educationally backward classes of citizen socially and educationally backward classes and as backward class of citizen the different articles of the constitution after independence obcs have been identified through specially appointed commissions Com- communities are included in the list of obcs on the basis of their social and economic backwardness the godia lohar community godia lohar committee community given to wandering 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 the large castes for instance included in the cent- central list of obcs for rajasthan The washerman community is included in central list of OBC for Gujarat, Haryana, Punjab, Chandigarh, Dadar and Nagar Haveli, Daman and Diu, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Delhi and Goa. There are several such communities in the OBC list for different states. Identification of communities as other backward classes has a long history. After 1806, the listing in colonial period were undertaken as the basis of administrative reports and assessments. In January 1960, 1953, the Kaka Kalekar Commission was constituted to identify the criteria and pre- and prepare a list of OBCs. It laid down four criteria to identify OBCs: low social position in caste hierarchy, lack of general educational advancement among the majority of the caste community, inadequate or lack of representation in com- in government services. and industry the commission listed 20, 2399 communities as backward and 837 of them as most backward five out of 10 members of the commission submitted di- dissenting notes in 1979 the mandal commission was set up the mandal commission developed a composite index of backwardness consisting of social educational and e- economic con- indicators currently reservation reservation of 27% of seats in higher educational institutions and jobs in public sector is being sought by the obcs denotified tribes in 1871 some tribes were noted as criminal in the criminal tribes act launched by the british it bestowed on the police power to arrest them on suspicion the act defined their identity more than 130 years ago and astonishingly not much has had changed for them since then despite the fact that 5 years after independence the criminal tribes act was repealed the tribes were no longer to be identified as criminal they were denotified in 1952 and came to be known as denotified tribes dnts the antro liquor committee working in 1949 emphasized that dnts were somehow not more or less criminal less criminal than the rest of the people a logical fallout of this percept, per, 
perspective is the negation of the need for a special act to deal with the dnt simultaneously all india criminal tri 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 tribes inquiry Commission committee was working towards annulling of criminal tribes act in 1982 the kaka Kelkar committee made recommendations recommendations for the DNTs. In 1965, an advisory committee on the re revision of the lists of scheduled scheduled castes and scheduled tribes, the local committee, said about the DNTs. We suggest that the present amol an anomalous position regarding the denotified as communities rather than tribes should be rectified as soon as possible after a detailed investigation. Though few there are welfare centers for denotified tribes, the chief mission of these centers is socio-economic uplift, upliftment of denotified tribes. The centers are engaged in providing pre-primary education to children below the age of children between the age of three and five years and training and sewing and uh, sewing and embroidery work to girls and women who belongs to these tribes the dnts themselves aspire to be included in the scst list list so as to be able to avail the benefits extended to them it is ironi ironical that while the recommendations recommendations made for the dnts dnts are well intended their plight remains deplorable minorities in a very general sense, the term minority refers to a relatively small group of people differing from others in race, religion, language or political persuasion. In the administrative vocabulary, the, the statistical criterion forms the basis of defining the minority groups. Thus, a community with less than 50% strength of the population in a state qualifies to be counted under the category of minority. Low numerical count often entails discrimination and lack of power in various spheres of life. Pathy suggests, suggests that in the field of social science, size of the population is not a sufficient criterion for determining a minority group. Importantly, the fact of being discriminated against, against because of religious, racial or national background inher inherent difference and destructiveness from the dominant group constitutes the basis of ascribing minority status constitute a community. Surely, a community may constitute a majority in one state but minority in another state or in the context of the country. It is equally important to appreciate that a community may be minority in linguistic, religious, ethnic and other terms. Minority therefore is a widely diverse category. Minorities complain complain that their social, economic and political interests are jeopardized, geo, jeopardized and often surrendered before the interests of those who constitute the majority. The assertion of rights by minorities and the reluctance of majority to yield leads to conflict and riots. They feel, they feel disadvantaged and oppressed, segregated and sometimes ridiculed. At every stage, they are required to negotiate their demands with those in majority. Whether they relate with securing admission in schools or a, or a well-paying job, this assertion of rights by minorities and the re reluctance of the majority to yield often leads to conflict, sometimes involving violence and bloodshed. In several situations, the majority feels that the demands of the minority are uncalled for the for, for uncalled uh, for uncalled for and unjustified in the indian democracy which uphold equality and freedom for all citizens irrespective of their status the constitution dispels with any form of discrimination based on religion or language considerations <clears throat> in fact the constitution adopts measures and safeguards to recognize their rights of the minorities in conserving <coughs> their culture, establishing and ad administering, administering educational institutions of their choice. The National Minorities Development and Finance Corp Corporation was set up in 1994-95 to for their economic upliftment. Social Mobility People of lower castes who seek to ra raise their position in caste hierarchy may do so through non-formal processes as that of Sanskrit, Sanskritization, 
in the words of sri sri nivas who identified the process and formulated the concept of sanskritization the caste system is far from a rigid system in which the position of each component caste is fixed for all time movement has always been possible and especially so in the middle regions of the hierarchy a low caste was able in a generation or two to rise to a higher position in the hierarchy by adopting veggie vegetarian vegetarianism and tito tito talism and by sans- sanskritizing its rituals and pan- pantheon in short it took over as far as possible the customs rites and beliefs of the brahmins and the adoption of the brahmanic way of life by a low caste seem to have been frequent though theoretically forbidden this process has been called sanskritization dalit dalits in their own way have con- contested the subordinate position assigned to them in the religious and social domain of society jyotiba phule 1826 to 1890 who belonged to the peasant caste developed a large dalit following he chiefly organized the sudras in maharashtra challenging Brah- brahmin superiority on several counts that had wide mass appeal he reinterpreted puranic mythology from the perspective of the social socially distressed fully's writings included violence on women and their operation operation as a form of exploitation in patern patriar- patriarchal settings Many activists belonging to low castes were drawn to the anti-caste, anti-Brahmin, even anti-Hindu ideology of the kind and fully advocated. The non-Brahmin movement nationwide voice, voiced protest against Brahmin exploitation and centralization of resources. Bhimrao Ramji Ambedkar, 1891 to 1956, better known as Baba Saheb, entered the area of politics. claiming the heritage of non brahmins ambedkar constituted the the bhiskrut hitkarni sabha biskut biskrut hitkarni sabha in which educated mahar boys and few upper caste hindus were members the sabha held conferences of which the one at mahad in konkan concluded with a struggle to drink water from the town tank in 1935 ambedkar proclaimed that he was born a hindu but would not die a hindu and founded the independent labor party that launched struggles and agitation against caste based operation and brahmin domination he united the dalit forces to come together in order to function as a political alternative that would fight atrocities on dalits force forcefully as also provide a forum for economic and social liberation of dalits There were several others as Rama Bai, Tara Bai, Pariyar and others who lead the march against Dalit operation. A large number of Dalits converted to Christianity or Islam in order to escape the humiliation and exploitation of being the lowest in the caste hierarchy. The tribal communities on the other hand too launched several movements to protest and safeguard their interests. The better known among them are those for establishing political autonomy. example go example goes jharkhand movement for asserting their customary rights of land and forest and for socio cultural rights example goes gonds of madhya pradesh claiming kshetriya status by reworking their social and religious institutions in line with high caste hindus summary we hope that you now you now would be able to understand the position of the marginalized people in society their social reality and struggle for simple amenities in life many people think about the marginalized people as a single uniform group, group of people it is clear that the marginalized is not a homogeneous category it is widely diverse and consists of different social and cultural groups that are largely disadvantaged disadvantaged there are several constitutional provisions and acts to safeguard their interests apart from these several ngos are engaged in the upliftment of their social and economic conditions a large number of measures consists of facilitating facilitating spread of education imparting vocational training leading to self reliance 
it is rather unfortunate that in spite of the safeguards and provisions for the marginalized groups they continue to complain of poverty operation and exploitation surely the welfare schemes do not reach the needy people at the grassroots they are often appointed by the powerful and influential people the marginalized groups do seek to uplift their social and economic conditions significantly in addition to the constitutional safeguards and welfare schemes for the marginalized groups it is important to empower them and repose faith in them we must be empathetic to their needs and ensure that the benefits intended for the marginalized groups reach them without being siphoned off by opportunities opportunist people